Sunrise, sunrise, looks like morning in your eyes. She's one of the most popular singers of the past decade, but Nora Jones still wishes she could change her voice. I've always wanted to sound older than I am, and when I sing, I've always wanted it to sound rougher than it does. Have you tried to make your voice rougher? It's not worth it. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, but it's not worth it. Age does it eventually. Age will do it. I can wait. <laughs> Come away with me in the night. What she hasn't had to wait for is success. At 33, she's already sold more than 40 million records and won nine Grammy Awards. Ten years ago, her debut album, Come Away With Me, made her an international sensation. It would become one of the best-selling records of the decade. Come away with me and we'll kiss on a mountain top. You kind of get everything the yeah. first time. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's like, what do you do for an encore? It's an impossible situation to top, and you don't try to top it. Jones did follow it with two more number one albums, but she's also branched out. I don't know how to begin. Starring in the indie film, My Blueberry Nights. Isn't this reserved? Is that for you? You felt totally comfortable acting. Oh, no, I was terrified. You ended up in this big kissing scene with Jude Law. Yes, I did, which I also had no idea about. You didn't know that was coming? No, but it was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> It all depends on who's waiting for you on the other side. And while her singing voice is still silky, her songwriting can now be stinging. Oh, Miriam, that's such a pretty name. On her latest album, Little Broken Hearts, in the song Miriam, the jilted singer envisions murdering a rival. I'm gonna smile. It's the dark side of Nora Jones. Oh, it's the dark side of anyone. Was there anything special that made you want to write that song? I don't know. <laughs> there was nobody particularly you wanted to kill? <laughs> Maybe a combination of people. <laughs> but um, that is not a threat. And, you know, it's definitely fun to work that stuff out in song. And I finally realized you just write from your heart and you just kind of, you go crazy, you go off the deep end. All those things make a better song. Jones, who was raised in Texas, moved to New York when she was 20. We don't quite have it organized well. You're not alphabetical? Well, the record I mean, collection in the Brooklyn townhouse she shares with her boyfriend shows her early influences were jazz. This, this is beautiful, this. Oh, Ellington and Coltrane. Well, I love both of them. So this is what you came to New York wanting to play? This is what I came to New York wanting to play. I mean, I wish I could play like Duke Ellington, but you know. She found work playing piano. My first gig here was doing, I guess it was happy hour. It was the weirdest timed gig. She'd make 50 bucks for five hours. Were you excited just to have the gig? I was so excited. Even though she says no one was listening, but that would soon change. And this is the old living room. This is the old living room right yeah. here? When she got a regular slot at a small club called The Living Room. Heart is drenched this is 22-year-old Nora Jones playing there in 2002. Her album had yet to be released. But you'll be on my mind for Within a year, the young singer's first record would sweep the Grammy Awards. Come away with me, Nora Jones. Nora Jones! Nora Jones. Nora Jones! What did it feel like to hear your name called? It felt crazy because it was called by all these idols of mine, like Aretha Franklin and Bonnie Raitt. Jones, who took home five Grammys that night. I can't believe this. So which one is it? It's like down... It's down there. ...was still living in a little Brooklyn walk-up. So were they selling rings when you were in here? No, this used to be a hair salon. You were still living here when you got your Grammys. Yeah. And you came home, and this was in the newspaper? Yeah. <laughs> the 
but suddenly That's funny. she was famous. Grammy queen Nora's $1,400 Brooklyn Digs. Yeah, but you know, for a two bedroom at the time, it wasn't really that expensive. You must have freaked out when they put your apartment in the paper. I was a little freaked out. Jones hadn't been expecting much when she first signed with Bruce Lundvall, the head of Blue Note Records. The story goes that you called Bruce Lundvall when the album had sold about two million copies and <laughs> asked him if you could make it stop. Well, I think it was one million, and yeah, I said, come on, we've sold a million records, isn't that enough? Let's just stop all this. This is silliness, <laughs> you know. Can we tone it down a Can little? Can we tone it down? I felt a little overexposed and a little shy. It didn't stop. Jones' debut album went on to sell 26 million copies. You were a little uncomfortable with the whole fame thing, weren't you? I was a little uncomfortable, and I also felt very confused about how to deal with people asking about my family mm -hmm. and my dad. Her father is Ravi Shankar, the renowned Indian sitar player and close friend of the late George Harrison. Shankar broke up with her mother, concert promoter Sue Jones, soon after Nora was born. There was a period of time where you really weren't in, in contact, right? Yeah, it's not that we had such a horrible relationship. We just didn't really see each other. From about 11 to 18, we didn't really talk. Was there something special that precipitated you reconnecting with your father? He called <laughs> and invited me to come visit him. What was that first meeting like? It was wild. I think everybody's heart was beating really fast. My dad's too, I mean, he was happy to have me back in his life and I was happy to get to know him. The thing is, I grew up so close to my mom and we'd been so close my whole life. She definitely was happy to see me reconnect with him and they've even made nice with each other over the years, which was nice for me to see. At that meeting, Jones also connected with her half-sister, Anushka, who she'd never met. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Did you know about her before that? Oh I think I knew about her since I was nine. We're very close now. We've had a great 15 years of being sisters. These are good. Oh, my God. Right? I'll send these to you. Oh, God. I want to eat him. You could see that when Nora and Anushka, also an accomplished musician, met up backstage this past summer. They came together? Yeah, they did. Actually, they totally did come together, which is kind of funny. We look a lot alike in some ways and then not at all in some ways, but we have a lot of similar mannerisms. It's taken a while, but the singer has made her peace with success. I've gotten a lot more comfortable performing. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, you weren't so comfortable? I was just kind of, I didn't know what to say to the audience. Little broken hearts of the night. After a decade as a pop star, Nora Jones is still surprisingly down to earth. Sometimes you get out there and you feel like you don't have any clothes on all of a sudden, but usually it's good. If the audience gives you a lot of love, it's pretty easy. Can 